This is Scientific American's 60 Second Science. I'm Karen Hopkin. When you stop to think about it, it's not all that easy to speak. First, you have to think of something to say. Then, your brain has to tell your mouth to say it. Interruptions anywhere along this articulation pathway can impair the utterance and create something like a stutter. Now, studying a neurocomputational model of this complex process, researchers have found that stuttering stems from a glitch in the neural circuit that initiates speech. They presented their findings at the meeting of the Acoustical Society of America. My main research interest is understanding how the brain translates thoughts, Frank Gunther of Boston University, into movements of the tongue and the other speech articulators to convey these thoughts to another person. He says that stuttering is very common, and it happens in all languages. It's estimated that about 1% of the world's population stutters. Despite this, and despite being studied at least as far back as the ancient Romans, our understanding of what causes stuttering has until recent years been very poor. Numerous neural circuits come into play when it comes to generating speech. But the key drivers can be broken down into two main circuits. One is an initiation circuit, and the other is an articulation circuit. To understand the function of these circuits, it's useful to consider something like the Energizer Bunny, which has an on-off switch, as well as a set of motors and gears that make the bunny walk and play drums when the switch is turned on. The on-off switch initiates the movement, and the motors and gears make it happen. But which of these circuits can lead to a stutter? To find out, Gunther pieced together equations that represent how the neurons that form these circuits interact. These equations describe neural activity in different parts of the brain, including the basal ganglia, cerebellum, and the cerebral cortex. One set of equations represents the electrical activity of the neurons in all of these regions. Another, the strength of the connections they form with each other. That allows Gunther and his team to experimentally manipulate various aspects of the system. And it allows us to test different versions of the story regarding the basal ganglia's involvement in stuttering by basically impairing different parts of the circuit and observing what happens in terms of speech output and also brain activity. The basal ganglia, structures tucked beneath the brain's cerebral cortex, play a critical role in initiating a variety of motor activities. They basically monitor our thoughts, sensations, and actions, and they determine which actions we should perform next. That includes the muscles involved in speech. That's an example of the speech that comes from Gunther's computational model when everything's working as it should. But then... Gunther fiddles with the equations in the initiation circuit, reducing the connections here or boosting the stimulation there, which produces what sounds like a typical stutter. And that says to Gunther, Stuttering's a problem with the on-off switch. The motors and gears work fine, but the switch doesn't always turn on when it should, or it doesn't stay on as long as it should. This results in delays in initiating a word, or repetitions of the first part of the word. And these are the behaviors that we refer to as stuttering. Having a computer model allows Gunther to test out different hypotheses for why the initiation circuit fails. Whether, for example, it's an overabundance of activation or a degradation of neuronal signaling. Gunther says he'd like to combine his model with imaging studies that show the basal ganglia in action to see whether his predicted mechanisms play a role in people who stutter. The ultimate goal is to come up with precisely targeted treatments like drugs that tweak the activity of the basal ganglia without inducing serious side effects. Or possibly even implanted electrodes that modulate activity in particular parts of the basal ganglia circuit. Which should make your basal ganglia as good as that dog. For Scientific American's 60 Second Science, I'm Karen Hopkin. Good, 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 good.